Joseph Egypt, Eritrea, and Somalia met for a three-way summit in Asmara on Thursday against a backdrop of heightened tensions in the Horn of Africa. Edgar Kitua is an international security and diplomatic expert at the U.S. International University in Nairobi, Kenya. He tells viewers Douglas Mpuga that he thinks the main concern of the three leaders is Ethiopia. The three of them have one main agenda, how to contain Ethiopia. Ethiopia is their common problem. Ethiopia is a problem for Eritrea. Ethiopia is, of, is also a big threat to, to the sovereignty and uh, security of Somalia. And Egypt now comes in as the big brother there to probably give security guarantees. So that is their common agenda, how they will cooperate from a military perspective, security perspective, and how they are going to protect their shared interests within the region, within especially the Horn of Africa. You mentioned Ethiopia. Ethiopia seems to have very poor relations with Egypt, with Eritrea, and with Somalia. How does it hope to cope when there's no understanding between most of the neighbors? Yeah, it's going to be a problem for Prime Minister Abiy because, you know, Egypt does not like what Ethiopia has done on the River Nile, on the Blue Nile, building the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. So that is Egypt's problem with Ethiopia, feeling like Ethiopia wants to start blackmailing or using the River Nile for geopolitical strategizing and maneuvering. Somalia does not like Ethiopia because Ethiopia has proven that it is going to interfere with its territorial integrity by going to make agreements or cut deals with Somaliland, in essence recognizing Somaliland. So Somalia views Ethiopia as a security threat for its survival. And uh, there have been rumors in the region that Prime Minister Abiy is regretting the peace he made with Eritrea because Ethiopia's desperation to get access to a seaport they could start looking at how to colonize or how to attack Eritrea to gain that access. So these three countries have at the heart of their problem Ethiopia and Ethiopia's renewed aggression in the region. And why is Ethiopia doing all this? Ethiopia feels it is a big, powerful country in the Horn of Africa. It feels it should be a regional hegemon. And you cannot be a powerful country and a powerful hegemon if you do not have access to a seaport. Where is the regional bodies, AU, in all this? So the problem of AU is one. The member states of the African Union are not united. They don't have singleness of vision and purpose. That simply means that all countries in the African Union, in as much as they claim to adhere or respect the African Union, eventually pursue their own internal interests. None of them really wants to follow or obey the African Union or to do what is, what is expected of them. So you'll find the African Union is almost toothless. The head of state assembly in the African Union, they do not want to talk about coups, do not talk about bad governance, corruption. It's a big boys club and they all keep quiet. And why they will not interfere is because they fear what the Sahel have done, what Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger have done, declaring that they are no longer members of the African Union. So the African Union is blackmailed by its member states that if you disturb us, if you interfere with what we are doing, we are going to renounce our membership, we are going to quit the African Union. Edgar Gitua is an international security and diplomatic expert at the U.S. International University in Nairobi. The Democratic Republic of Congo has protested the U.S. arriving of child labor in mines, with Kinshasa saying the assessment does not take into account the steps taken to improve on the sector's governance. The reactions this week followed a U.S. Department of Labor's report that said Cobalt, or from the DRC, is on the 2024 list of goods produced by child or forced labor. In an information note addressed to the DRC government and dated September 24th, the U.S. states that this mineral presents a high risk because it comes from artisanal mines. It also established a link between forced labor and artisanal and industrial mining. But the Congolese government urged the report deliberately ignores local realities and damages the international reputation of the Congolese mining sector. In a press release, the Congolese government denounced the inclusion of Congo's cobalt on the blacklist. 
It intends to call into question the effectiveness of international compliance control and supply chain due diligence mechanisms recognized in terms of human rights, labor, and safety to which manufacturers are rigorously subjected by independent international structures working directly with Western multinationals, European and American, to take account of end users. The DRC is the world's largest producer of cobalt, with about 70% of the world's deposits of minerals essential for the production of batteries for electric cars. The list by the Department of Labor could now be referenced by civil society seeking to highlight labor rights violations in global value chains and by companies working to prevent and mitigate such violations. The inclusion of DRC cobalt in the list of products subject to forced labor was motivated by an ELAB funded study in 2023 which revealed that workers in industrial and artisanal mines were subject to forced labor. The study highlighted indicators of forced labor, including excessive overtime, hazardous work, dismissal, unpaid wages, fines, debt, and other negative human rights consequences. The report also makes a passing reference to the fact that the cobalt industry in the DRC is dominated by large Chinese-owned mines, the report states. The Congolese government says it has implemented a number of reforms to improve regulations of the sector, including the creation of the General Inspectorate of Mines, the revitalization of the authority for the reputation of subcontracting in the private sector. The operation the the operationalization of the authority for the regulation and control of strategic mineral substances and the promotion of transparency in supply chains and membership of the international initiatives such as extractive industries, transparency initiatives, and many others.